Next up, we're going to add some fog to the scene. So again, I'll right click and add a particle system. And by default, it puts it inside this focal distance. And for this fog, instead of using world space, we are going to have it kind of locked into this viewport, because we want to add quite a few particles of this fog to make it look dense enough. And we don't want to fill the scene with a million particles. So for this case, we'll keep it in here. I'll rename this to fog. And to match the orientation of these snowflakes, I'll do a similar technique of moving it above and then changing this spray angle to 180 in the X. And the X axis is this left and right one. And so by spinning that around, if you just watch here, it's, <laughs> it's very slow, but you can see it rotating around that red axis here. And in this case, we're going to change the type to a line and just make the line long enough to cover this area. 0.3 or 0.4 is usually enough. And also be aware if someone's using an iPad, they're going to have a wider screen space usually. So you might even want to increase this more just to cover your bases. Now again, the lifespan needs to be a bit longer. That looks like it's plenty at five seconds. And again, I don't like this tilt to be set to 10 by default. So I'll disable that and increase the randomness to 999. And before we go any further on setting the parameters for this, let's make a material so we can see the effects of this better. So I'll add a material, double click it. And then again, double click the name, change it to matte fog set it to flat. And for this texture, I have this smoke texture that I use in almost all my projects, I'll just drag that in. And in the fog, I'll just select that text smoke, and change the blend mode to screen, and turn the opacity down a bit. So now you can see these are a little bit more foggier particles and not checkerboards. So back in the fog object, we can turn up the particle size substantially. 0.1 is a good start. 0.2 might be even better. Obviously, this is way too much, so we can turn down the birth rate. I think that's a good amount of variance you get there with just five emitted. Obviously, it's too bright still. So we'll go back into the material and just turn down this opacity until it's pretty subtle. And now you, you'll probably notice that these snowflakes are no longer visible. And that's because the alpha is being calculated in a certain order. Right now, the fog is being calculated first and then the snow. So basically what that means is if you look through the fog, you'll notice none of the snowflakes appear unless it's in front. So an easy way to fix this is just to change the render options and turn off use depth test and write to depth buffer. And that way these just kind of get rendered and they ignore their position in space. And we might have to add this to a layer later depending on how our whole scene gets built out. But for now, you can see both the fog and the snowflakes.